Dear Church, let's talk about Appian Media with my guest, Jeremy DeHutt. Hello and welcome to the Dear Church Podcast. I'm your host, Chris McCurley. I've got Jeremy DeHutt on with us today. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us, man. Well, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, and I'm excited to hear more about Appian Media. I have done my research and I think I know quite a bit, but I want our viewers and listeners to know more about this terrific resource that we have been utilizing at Oldham Lane. So our Wednesday night classes are actually doing mm. one of the videos in your, in your wide range, your plethora of videos that you have to yes. offer, but the one Walking with the Messiah, which tours the Holy Land, you and Barry Britnell, is that right? Uh, That's are, right. Are walking through the Holy Land and kind of giving a tour, a Bible class, if you will, that's yeah. that's interactive. We get to watch and kind of hear uh, the commentary. It's a really great series. And I want our folks to know more about that as well as just what the work of Appian Media is. Before we jump sure. into that, though, I want you to tell us just a little bit about yourself, kind of what you're doing nowadays, and um, you know your family, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So, um, living in the Midwest right now, uh, not too far from Louisville, Kentucky. We're about 20 minutes outside of town. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been serving the kingdom as an evangelist for about 22 years now. Wow. Um, 20 of those years was as a located evangelist. You know, I'm in the pulpit every week. Uh, Bible classes in the same congregation. But about two years ago, we moved to Kentucky um, to assist my mother and my father. Okay. Uh, mother has uh, health issues. They needed some support. So now I'm a non-located evangelist. Um, <laughs> so I receive support to do local evangelism, foreign evangelism, biblical counseling, and this work with Appian Media. Yeah. So wearing a lot of different hats through the course of a week, uh, really busy. Yeah. Um, my wife and I just celebrated our 20th anniversary in March. Well, congratulations. So excited about that. That's great. Um, our oldest just finished his freshman year at college, which is exciting to have one at that stage of life. Yes. Um, we have four biological kids, our oldest four, and then two adopted kids. Um, our middle two kids were special needs sons, and both of them have passed away and gone on to be with the Lord. Um, yeah. One passed in 2013, one in 2016. So we tell people we have four in the house right now. Um, but two with the Lord. Yes. And just very, very blessed to be serving the way that we're serving. Yes. And we're blessed to have you doing that. Thank you for all that you're doing. And, Absolutely. And I want you to, to, to tell us as exhaustively as you want to, <laughs> tell us all about the great things that Appian Media is doing. Like I said, I, I keep yeah. up with you guys, love the work you're doing. I wanted you on to promote you guys. And so let's start there. Just tell us about, sure. tell us, uh, maybe start with telling us how this whole the genesis of Appian Media. How did this all start? Absolutely. You know, how did we get yeah. going here? So, um, one of my brothers, one of my younger brothers, uh, went to film school down in okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And when he graduated, uh, ended up getting married, wound up in Indianapolis, and he connected with another Christian um, who was also in film. And they just kind of put their heads together. They were teaching some high school Bible classes at a couple of different churches. And just started lamenting the fact that they were finding it hard to locate quality media content to use in their Bible classes. Yeah, um, They were having a hard time finding videos. They are having a hard time finding uh, quality maps or still images, especially at a reasonable cost. You know, you can go to some of these stock image sites, but most churches weren't really making use of those six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, so they came up with this brainchild. Hey, what if, what if we started a nonprofit? crowdsourced funded the thing and tried to make some free biblical content that we could stream online. Yeah. Um, so all of the donations were covering the cost of the, the, the production and then making the media available for free, which is a horrible business model. <laughs> um, but they, they said, Hey, if the Lord blesses this work, he'll bless it. If not, he won't. Um, so I think in 2016 is when we had our first Kickstarter, uh -huh. um, really low budget. And their original picture was sending someone over there, the two of them and one person as a host, renting a car and driving around Israel. <laughs> uh, my wife and I had made a trip the year before, and we said, hey, before you guys plan too much more, you should talk to the guy who led our tour. His name is Barry Britnell. Um, he can answer all kinds of logistic questions. And he did that. Yeah. And so through the course of everything, we, we wound up with a team of about a half a dozen people. And in 2016, started going over to Israel um, to make these resources available for free. Yeah. Um, 
We've been going, I think, almost every year with a major production trip overseas. Uh, we've been to Israel three or four times uh, in 2020. Uh, in the fall of 2020, we went to Turkey. Okay. Uh, we're in the, the planning stages, pre-production of our current overseas trip. Okay. And the thing just kind of grew from there. You know, in their heads, they were thinking originally video. Okay. Um, that video and the internet were our Appian way of our generation. And that's where yeah. they came up with the name Appian Media. Yeah. But we started realizing media consumption is so much more than that. Like we did not want to just create bingeable video content that, that people used for entertainment but really didn't engage them heart and soul. Yeah. We wanted to get them into the word. So we started writing study guides to accompany the video content. Mm -hmm. um, we started creating podcasts. And at this point, we're in the process of developing a multi-year curriculum to take people all the way through the, the Bible using our study guides and our incorporated video. And I will so say, yeah. big picture. And, and I will say the study guides are very helpful as well. So the way that Oldham Lane has been utilizing the material is yeah. we'll, we'll watch the video. There will be a, a facilitator in the class, a teacher who will set up the video content for that night on a Wednesday night. We watch the video and and then the teacher will come back and and go through the study guide ask some questions some of our teachers have even gone off the study guide and kind of gone off script yeah. and said what did you think about this what did you think about that we even actually had a teacher that paused the video like five times during the course of it and <laughs> said right. you know here's a teaching moment there's a teaching moment yes. um, it can be used in so many different ways but it really does puts you in the setting. That's what I love about yeah. the videos is that it, it puts you in the setting and allows you to kind of walk with you and Barry. And ba man, Barry's a sharp guy. That guy knows he his stuff. He really is. I mean, to appreciate Barry, right? He leads these tours to the Bible lands out of his love for the Lord and his love for the word. Um, that's just kind of a side thing that he does. Mm -hmm. He actually has his degree in meteorology. And wow. then uh, by day, he's a computer programmer for a contractor out of... Um, out of Athens, Alabama. Okay. So super, super sharp guy. Very much so. Yeah. 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 So how how has the response been? I mean, you said it was crowdsourced, which is always kind of fickle and difficult. Yeah. H has the response been as as good as what we have seen at our on our end at, at Oldham Lane? I mean, it has been, you know, it's been amazing to see how the Lord works with that. Um, we saw an explosion of interest during 2020 when people were locked home, you know, yeah. they weren't getting out. Um, some folks weren't assembling as often as they could because their churches were trying to navigate the pandemic, but that meant they were at home looking for resources. Yeah. And so our website, our traffic just exploded. Yeah. Um, we had to pivot with some of the content we were creating. I've got a little guy. This is this is the second week in a row, Jeremy. We had Trey and Lee Morgan on last week, and they have a dog that wanted to be on the show as well. So, yes, yeah, we've got a little Australian Shepherd, and he's a great, great dog. That's good. But yeah, the the pandemic, it just took off, and so we pivoted and started streaming some content, making some things stateside that we could turn around really quickly. Yeah, study guys that we could crank out really quickly. So we've seen our traffic just explode. I think. To this point, uh, we have about 160 countries that have streamed our content. Wow. Um, we have several satellite services around the world that have licensed the content. Right now, media has licensed the content. Logos has licensed, licensed the content. Um, and every time we release something new, they're wanting to get that in their house as well. So yeah, yeah. The response has been fantastic. That's awesome. Tell me a little bit about your first visit to Israel, to the Holy Lands. Oh man. And what that did for you and how that changed you. And talk yeah. a little bit about maybe give a give a plug for other people going and sure. how that can help somebody in my position as a minister deepen yeah. their relationship with the Lord, but also to deepen their study and and their preaching. Yeah, I'll tell you what, our first trip um, to Israel was was really a, a blessing and a gift. Um, we were just about to go into hospice care with our second special needs son. We didn't know that at the time, right? but for those who have taken care of special needs family members, it's just, it's taxing. It, sure. it, there's a toll there. Sure. And so it was uh, a respite for my wife and I to go on this, you know, 12, 13 day trip to the Bible lands, um, went with about 30 people and it was just a fantastic time to, to recharge, 
um, to be able to put ourselves, like you said, in the, in the setting, the cultural setting of the Bible, and to see the geography, the, the places that these events took place. Um, someone has repeatedly made mention that to make the trip for yourself helps reaffirm the reliability of the biblical text. Yeah. So you can, you can be a faithful Christian and believe in the Lord and never travel to the Bible lands. And we want to make sure that people understand that. Sure. But it's helpful and reaffirming to your faith to see even these small details that the Bible mentions that you might just glance over in your reading, but to see it in person, uh, it just, it increases your faith. So, yeah. you know, the very first production trip we took was in 2016, the same year that our second son passed. And I was really wrestling with whether I wanted to be away from my family for two weeks. Yeah. And especially my oldest son, he was a young teenager at the time and had been a Christian just a year or two. And uh, the team agreed to let us bring him as long as he could keep up, work hard, you know, <laughs> handle those super hot heat. We went in, uh, in June and it was over Father's Day. Okay. And so to be able to take my son after everything our family had gone through, be in the Bible lands yeah. with him over Father's Day, it was just, it was, it was so special. For sure. And he talked about how reaffirming it was for his faith. Yeah. At such a young age, going through what he had gone through to realize that he could trust in the infallible word of God. Sure. Um, so for anybody who has any interest, especially for Bible teachers and preachers, um, there's a gentleman that we interviewed a couple of years ago for one of our projects who talked about he recognized as a young man some of the preachers and teachers that he was listening to, the ones that really engaged him, that seemed to have such a passionate love for the word, were some of those who had traveled those places, who had seen those things, and they'd put some of those pieces together. Yeah, And that's what inspired his lifelong love with traveling to the Bible lands, Yeah, um, was how impactful those men had been. So anyone who can go, if they're able to, I would encourage Yeah, them. yeah. Tell me a little bit about, because this last video that we watched, um, you guys were, were very careful, very deliberate yeah. um, because of the place that you were visiting. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the reception that you have received. Obviously, there's some etiquette there because they're not all Church of Christ folks, you know. No. So, so talk a little bit about the reception that uh, when you go over there and you're filming and all that, but also talk a little bit about kind of the constraints and kind of the landmines that you have to avoid. Yeah, so you want to be really diplomatic. I mean, obviously, for those of us that are traveling, this is not our home. We're visitors. Right. And so we want to make sure that we have permission, that we have permits, that we've paid the fees that we need to pay to be able to access the places that we want to access. So making sure that we've, you know, crossed all of our T's, dotted all of our I's. Um, and then understanding some of the cultural differences, you know, going through the old city there in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. understanding the four quarters and the different people that live in each quarter. Yeah. Um, being sensitive to the fact that you're in a you're in a place where several of the major monotheistic religions of the world have a claim. And being patient and compassionate with each other over those differences. I mean, those folks, especially in the old city, get along together so well. Yeah. Um, kind of modeling our interaction off of them. Uh, for most Westerners or most folks from America, that can seem really intimidating. Most of the images that we see of Israel or Jerusalem or the Gaza Strip, all of that stuff, all we see is what makes the news, this, the splashes, sure. you know. Um, but for the most part, they do such a fantastic job working with people and, yeah. and working with each other. So uh, I think the scene that you're referring to is going up on the Temple Mount. Yes, right? yes. And making sure that we were ready for that, um, paying attention, being alert, um, listening to the people that have instructed us that work there, um, and being respectful. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, that's a key, being respectful of differences and how important it is to them. Um, you know, we were able to go into the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, yeah. We were able to go into the Dome of the Rock. Um, I don't, not all of that made it into the final cut. Um, but when you're respectful of people, they tend to be respectful back. Is it, uh, is it very similar to kind of our culture in that they've commercialized a lot of it and, you know, turned oh, it into, sure. you know. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about for a lot of people uh, who ask one of the first questions people ask about traveling to places like Israel or Turkey 
is it safe? You know, is it safe? Sure. Yes, it is perfectly safe. I mean, there was one place we wanted to go. Um, we wanted to go into Hebron, but it wasn't wise at that time for us to go into the city. And so we found a hillside to shoot the city from a hillside. Okay. And, and the place that we stopped was the front yard uh, of some Muslim folks. And uh. they were so generous and hospitable and they brought out super hot tea and cold cucumbers and you know we explained to them we're christians and we're shooting this documentary can we please use your yard and they were so gracious toward us wow uh, you know which is not what some people might expect yeah yeah but like you yeah, said super. like you said we take a lot of our cues from the media and so you, you're thinking I, I guess the average person is thinking, well, it's not safe to go over there. And I've heard the same thing is that the splashes are what you see, but it's actually very safe. And, and so anybody it wanting is. to go. And the guides that work there, um, uh, the guy that we usually use, his name is Gus, does such a fantastic job. He lives in the old city mm -hmm. and he's got contacts. Everybody, he says, I've got a neighbor. I've got a neighbor. <laughs> Even though the neighbor is 60 miles away. Right. Um, he knows when and where it's wise to go. You know, when I first started preaching, I was up in Northwest Indiana, practically Chicago. Uh -huh. And you just learned there are certain parts of town that are wise to go to at certain times of the day or not. Sure. You know, we have those same areas here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, just seeing that perspective. Well, you, you touched on this already. But before we came on air, you, you said that you had uh, maybe a little bit of a presentation. Uh, I would like you to just maybe talk a little bit about the strategy uh, again, yeah. you touched on it a while ago, but what's the strategy here with Appian Media? What is it that you want to accomplish um, yeah. big picture, long term? Yeah, so big picture, long term, you know, I think our mission statement, boiling it down, is trying to help people become familiar with the unfamiliar. Yeah. You, you know, when you're studying your Bible, you're talking about uh, a context that those books were written in and an audience that it was written to that's different from ours Absolutely. in so many ways, geographically, historically, culturally, economically, uh, just so many differences. Yeah. And when we read through any uh, document, our brain fills in those unknowns with what's familiar to us. No doubt. So, you know, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. So when I read through something and they use the word mountain, my brain fills in with Mount Hood, you know, this <laughs> right. snow-capped mountain that you ski down with a little glacier on the side. Yes. Um, that is not Mount Sinai. You know, that is not <laughs> right. any of those other mountains over there. Um, so to go and to travel to these places and to capture visuals and to talk to people who are familiar or living in the culture helps fill in those gaps of our understanding sure. and helps us appreciate the biblical text more. You know, there are two things that we've been trying to do. With our earlier productions, we were trying to point out that the biblical text is reliable. Right. So as you talk about the life of Jesus and you talk about the different things that the Gospels describe, they're accurate. Mm -hmm. you, you can trust them. And if they're reliable in those small details, then you can trust what the Gospels say about things that you can't see, right? That, right. that you have to take by faith. And then once we establish the reliability of the text, we're trying to point out that the biblical text is also relevant. So even though we're separated by thousands of years from those original events, God's word is powerful and still has application to us today. Yeah. And so our, our mission has been twofold, to help reaffirm the reliability of the biblical text, but help people appreciate the relevancy of the biblical text. Yeah, yeah, and a great mission, and you're doing very yeah. well with that. I wanna, I wanna know kind of when you guys get together and talk because Appian Media is not just you and and no. you alone. There's there's a staff right. like it's there a, is. it's a pretty big organization. So when y'all get together and talk, what's what's next? What do y'all talk about? Like what absolutely is, all the big absolutely. plans and ideas that you have going forward. So we are in the middle of pre-production for our next international trip. I think the long-term goal is every year or two, we will have some large international project that we're planning. Okay. Um, those take time. You know, people have been requesting that we do the, the missionary uh, journeys of Paul. Right. Well, that's, you're talking multiple countries over years. Like, how do you shoot that? How exactly. do you tell that story? Exactly. Right. Um, and that just takes a lot of planning. Yeah. Uh, so there's one that we're in the middle of planning right now, Lord willing, if everything falls into place and it's looking really good. Um, <laughs> we should be making a trip in the fall and sharing uh, news about that, Lord willing, June, July. 
So if people are following us on our channels, Instagram, Facebook, or if they become a subscriber to appianmedia.org, they'll get updates on, okay, this is the target window, this is the production, this is the budget. Um, so we have that in the works every couple of years. We sure. usually sit down and map out a five to six year plan. Um, and then along with that is developing our curriculum and our study guides. Mm -hmm. You know, people have talked about how uh, so much Bible study curriculum is so dated. You know, a lot of it hasn't been updated in 15, 20, 25 years. Yes. Or the guts of it hasn't been updated, but the covers have, yes. which really doesn't help a whole lot. Exactly. So the study guides that we've been working on, um, we've talked about in our, in our planning how it's the study guide reimagined, mm -hmm. right? We're not just asking true or false questions. We're not just trying to cram your head full of facts. We're trying to engage people and, and engage their hearts, engage their imaginations, um, and to motivate them toward faith. So we've got uh, usually these uh, full color images, beautiful maps, QR codes that link to videos to help bridge cultural gaps, um, devotional sections. We're trying to engage you through prayer, like all these different ways that we're trying to engage a person in their walk with God. Sure. Um, we want to continue developing that curriculum. So we're working on a timeline to create a multi-year curriculum to take people all the way through the Bible, um, both K through 12, and then also an adult curriculum that can be used for high school students. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you're, you have no shortage of material, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, there's so much we can do. And then every time we come home, we have more and more footage that we've created or, or uh, cultivated that we can pull from for multiple projects. Yes, yeah. T Jeremy, you, you mentioned, and I don't think you mentioned it on air, I think it was when we were off air, um, but you mentioned that you've been doing some speaking, traveling other places. Yeah. Um, so what is it like for yourself, for Appian Media, to um, drum up support? I know that's gotta be difficult. Yeah. What can people do to connect and to provide support uh, sure. I mean, I know we can pray, and certainly that's important. Financially, no, you've got to pay some bills. So, how can we people? Do. How can people connect with that? Tell me all the channels and avenues and ways, and maybe even have you come speak. What can we do to help you? Absolutely. So, there are several of us on the team that have done presentations. You know, Barry has gone, and he's got a series called Lessons from the Land that he likes to give to churches. Yeah. Um, really hitting his experience as a tour guide. Um, and some of the things that he likes to share with people with his own photos that he's taken over years of doing this, right? Yes. Um, and then one of our other um, executive producers, Dan Kingsley, uh, who's also a doctor by day, but then he leads these tours during the year with Barry. Wow. Uh, he's got his own collection, does a very similar thing. Um, I've been doing a lesson series on the life of Christ, kind of simplifying and incorporating some of the videos from Appian Media, and then doing other presentations using our content for churches. Yeah. So coming into a church and sharing with them, hey, these are the resources that we're creating and sharing with them. These are some creative ways that you might want to use them in your own group, small group studies, evangelistic studies, whatever, helping them think outside of the box about how to use media. Yeah. Um, so there's there's that opportunity. And you can reach out to us and contact us through our website at abbeymedia.org. Okay. Um, there's another way that people can support us, which is through abbeymedia.org. If they become a monthly subscriber then there's a certain amount that they can uh, commit to that helps us level out our fundraising, you know, where we have a consistent every month, we can anticipate what's coming in. Um, and then we try to figure out, okay, what do we need on top of that for the next big production? Sure. Right. And we have corporate donors that donate. Um, we've had several over the years that have helped with that individual donors that will donate large amounts um, through the course of a year. Since we're a 501c3, that means there's a tax benefit to them for doing that. We sure. want to give them that incentive. Um, so all of that is if you contact us through our website, you can do that. Yeah. There's also the support through the workbooks. So the workbooks are not free. The videos are. So if people go in and they make uh, a large purchase, you know, a bulk order, they get the benefit of that. And then we also get the benefit of the sales. Yeah. Um, we also have the donate program. So there are some churches that struggle with the cost of a workbook or a study guide like we're describing. And so we have a program where if you purchase so many, there's a percentage of that that we will gift toward a church that can't afford it. Right. Um, 
And so that's also a program you can reach out to us about to help others use the material that's being created through Appian Media. Yeah, yeah. So several different several different funnels. Yeah, and and yeah. with and with that, Jeremy, tell tell our, our viewers and listeners all the different ways they can connect. So you mentioned AppianMedia.org. What are the other? Yep. You mentioned Facebook and Instagram a while ago. You know some of those. Uh, what where are all the venues we can find you? So if you go to YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. Okay. And one of the fun things about the YouTube channel is we also have behind the scenes. So one of the things that we started doing during our first production trip, um, and this is just how talented and how hardworking the team is, is we're shooting content for multiple things on the same day. So one of the things we started doing to help our family back home know that we were safe uh -huh. is we started producing daily recap videos. Okay. So they would take snippets from the, the footage that day, edit a small two to three minute video, which is its own piece of content, uh -huh. and upload it that day while we're in country for every day that we're in country. Oh, wow, that's cool. And, and that was received so well that we've done it for every single trip. And so those are fantastic pieces of content. You can see the evolution of our, of our style, um, of some of the skills um, some of the unique features and some of the unique people that we've worked with. And that's all on our YouTube channel, daily recap videos, okay. um, dozens of those. You can also access those through our mobile app. So one of the things we released last October was uh, an app that houses all of our videos so you can watch all of our videos in our app. Yes. So if you go to your app store, no matter what kind of device you have, it's just Appian Media and you, you'll see our logo and you can watch all of our video content in that app. Yes. Um, which makes it really nice and convenient. You don't have to go to YouTube if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, that content is also available on YouTube. Um, it's on Right Now Media, it's on Logos. Um, and there's also the Instagram channel where they're uploading still images or short videos um, throughout the year and also making announcements. You know, we're about to have our capital campaign. So coming up in July, we'll have some primary fundraising for that major overseas production. Yeah. Um, and if people want to get updates about that, about what the target amount is and where the progress is, they can go to Instagram. Um, they can go to Facebook. They can become a member and get that email in their inbox uh, to get all of that update. Yeah, that's great. And, and I know that for me and for others, when they contribute monetarily to a work, they want to be able yes. to see benefit and to know that it's worthwhile because there's all sorts of works out there that oh, for sure. that that you can contribute to, and so you want to know, okay, well, th is this quantifiable? Can I can I see the results? And absolutely, you can with Appian Media. I mean, yeah. it's you know the content's everywhere, and you can judge for yourself. And I think you will find it's absolutely. high quality. It's really good stuff. Where do you, where do you find these folks that are so talented to work with? I'll tell you what, the, these folks know each other. I mean, there, there's a community. Okay. And w once the word gets out about what we're doing, there are Christians that reach out with skills that we didn't even know existed. And they say, hey, I love what you're doing. This is what I can offer. Could you use that? That's so for fantastic. one example, you know, the first two years where we were shooting Following the Messiah, I went and I used the wardrobe that I had. <laughs> and there's a sweet sister out of Nashville, Tennessee, that reached out to us. She said, hey, I'm a Christian. I love what you guys are doing. But I'm actually an image consultant. I can't donate financially, but um, I'm not criticizing. Could <laughs> I help you with your wardrobe? <laughs> can you tell me what your style is? And can I pick out pieces for you that would fit better with what you're trying to accomplish? And my wife said, yes. <laughs> I've been trying to do this for years, right? <laughs> I've been trying to do that for years. And I'll tell you, I showed up at a summer camp about a year ago to, to volunteer at this summer camp. And one of the campers came up and said, wow, you're, you're just a little bit more put together than you used to be. What happened? <laughs> image consultant, you know, a free image consultant told me how to dress. Man, um, that's awesome. But they find you, you know, when they realize the work that you're doing in the kingdom, they want to help the way that they can help. And so we've, we've got a list. If there's anybody out there that they think they might be able to help in some way and they want to get their name on the volunteer list or possibly even a paid position for some of these projects, yeah. let us know. Yeah. Um, people that do editing, people that do sound design, people that do color correction. Um, we've started hiring interns for three to six months at a time to help us crank through some of the behind the scenes work. Like you might not ever see them on camera, but if it weren't for what they do, 
no one would ever get anything on camera. Yeah. Um, so it, it takes a team and we're very, very blessed with all the people that help us. Absolutely. You are. And, and Jeremy, I can't thank you enough for what y'all are doing. Please send our best wishes and blessings to the Absolutely. rest of the team. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you all for tuning in. Again, if you have a question or comment about today's show, you can contact me at chris.mccurley at rippleoflight.com. Uh, if you have a specific question for Jeremy or the team, we'll send it on to him. I'm sure he'd be glad to, to respond. And, and also look up Jeremy, go to appianmedia.org or go to any of the other channels uh, and venues that he mentioned, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of those. And, uh, and let us know. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have a question. Jeremy, thanks again for joining us, buddy. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Sincerely, Chris.